fishermen bring their catch into the bustling port of Loo in Cornwall, before eventually taking on board a load of ice to preserve the next day's catch. For them, 20 hour days are not unusual, but strict fishing quotas now have to be adhered to. We were in the beautiful Duchy of Cornwall for just seven days and this was never going to be a relaxing holiday. One week is nowhere near enough to take in all the sights of any part of the Duchy but our principal reason for holidaying here was to pay a visit to the New Eden project near St Austell. A Victorian seven arched bridge over the River Lou joins the east and west sections of this bustling fishing port. Lou has several pleasant beaches and is within easy reach of many visitor attractions. Just three miles from Lou at St Keen is Paul Corrin's Museum of Magnificent Music Machines dedicated to the preservation of old theatre organs, pianolas and the like. After alighting at the station of St Keen, one can actually hear the sounds of magnificent theatre organs or historic pianolas drifting along on the morning air. Paul Corrin, the museum's founder and owner, is an absolute mine of information about all things mechanically musical. For instance, when we entered, he asked which part of the country we hailed from. We replied, Nuneaton, and he, without a moment's hesitation, said, Ah oh, yes, the Rich Cinema, a 1937 Compton organ, moved in 1968 to a Roman Catholic church in Clay Hall, Ilford, and the cinema's now a bingo hall. Spot on. My wife and I listened to it many times at the Ritz when we were courting. Paul himself is an accomplished player, which he proved when he demonstrated a fine Wurlitzer organ, rescued from a theatre in Brighton. The museum, which has a picnic area by the river, is well worth a visit, and our two hour stay flew by without a moment's boredom. Smuggling was rife in the 18th and 19th centuries in Cornwall and nowhere was it more prolific than in the fishing villages of Polperro, Lou and Mevagissi. Unfortunately, there are signs that Mevagissi seems to have succumbed to commercialism to some extent. In complete contrast on the River Foy is the picturesque village of Lorin which with its small fishing boats and yachts and abundant bird life has become a mecca for artists, photographers and bird watchers alike. Polpero is a showpiece harbour village just along the coast from Lou. It is extremely picturesque with its tightly packed cottages tumbling down to the fish quay on an inner harbour which was once packed with pilchard luggers. Truro was once a medieval stannery or tin mining town and Cornwall also once produced two thirds of the world's copper. China clay mining was a big industry too and a disused China clay pit near St Austell has become the home of the world's largest greenhouse and possibly the eighth wonder of the world, the Eden Project. 
The brief for the designers of the Eden Project was to create a spectacular theatre in which to tell the story of man's relationship with plants and his dependence upon them. And they created what was to become the largest greenhouse in the world. The greenhouses, or to give them their correct name, biomes, contain some 135,000 plants belonging to 4,500 species. Viewed from the top of the pit, the biomes looked like the eyes of huge flies, with the people near them looking like ants milling about. But one is completely dazed by the sheer size when actually entering the biome. It is 200 metres long, 100 wide and 47 high. Absolutely huge! Unless you've experienced firsthand the variety of plants and their leaves in a rainforest, You'll be totally amazed by their shape and variety when you actually see them in close-up. Take a moment to look at a few. In contrast to the tropical biome, the warm temperate one has yet to become fully established. But even so, plants from the Greek islands and other Mediterranean sources, and California and South Africa too, are already in place. Olive groves and poppy fields will eventually be side by side with some of Cornwall's own species. The biomes have their own unique system for temperature and humidity control and in a matter of a few moments, the air can be completely changed. A unique showcase for the world's plants has been created here at the Eden Project in Cornwall, and a visit is a must. The message it's putting across is that for man to survive, he must live in harmony with nature and look after the resources it provides. While travelling around this part of Cornwall, one can't help but notice the immense stone railway viaducts which suddenly loom into view from time to time. This one at Moorswater, which carries the Lou Valley line, was the first to catch the eye. The remains of the old edifice can be seen here next to its more modern replacement, while this old photograph shows the original spanning the valley. Quite near to Moore's Water, but this time on the Plymouth to Penzance line, behind a huge out-of-town store on the A38 at Trago Mills, is the even taller St Pinnock Viaduct. These Cornish railway viaducts had really started to fascinate us, and after seeing pictures of another in a book at our hotel, we decided to visit Calstock Viaduct on the way home. Calstock on the River Tamar is actually in Devon, but the detour was well worth it just to see yet another example of classic railway architecture. After Calstock, our journey home on a rainy September morning took us over a grim and desolate Dartmoor via Tavistock and Princetown 
to the tiny hamlet of Postbridge with its ancient Clapper Bridge, close to where the East Dart River rises. Our week's holiday dodging round the duchy had been a very lively but extremely interesting experience. And the visit to the Eden project, the main object of it all, had been successfully undertaken. Next time perhaps, we'll go further south into the county, perhaps to film other aspects of Cornwall.